In the first stage of drawing the portrait, we're just trying to get the basic forms onto the paper and where the different features fit in relation to one another. And now on the second phase, we're getting more detailed on what the features actually look like and also uh, very specifically where the edges of those different features are. And so in this uh, first step of drawing the eyes, I uh, had to do this multiple times. As I was working through trying to get the eye correct, it just kept looking too big. And I realized that I was drawing it too big in relation to the face because I was using the wrong landmark. I thought that the top of the uh, upper eyelid was much higher than it actually should be. And so it took me several attempts of drawing it, erasing it, and redrawing it before I got the actual size of the eye correct. And then I could go in and start filling in more details about what the eye on the model actually looks like. If you're doing this course yourself, my approach has been to watch the instructional video from beginning to end for each lesson, and then to go back and actually draw along with the video a second time. So when I'm watching it through the second time, I'm pausing it here and there, and I'm just following step by step doing what the instructor does. Now, one thing that I would recommend for anybody, whether you're following this course or not, put down a shield over the area of the drawing where you're not working at this point, because I spent so much time focused on the eyes here that I was putting the heel of my hand uh, on the paper quite a bit, and I was really obscuring and kind of rubbing away a lot of the drawing that I'd already done on the back of the head. And so when I started focusing on the nose, I put down that paper shield to prevent that from happening in the future. Now, with the eyes and the nose, and the mouth and the ear, all of them are aided by a knowledge of anatomy. Now, the instructor, he goes through all of the different parts of the eye and the nose and what you should be looking for. And this can be helpful in sort of demystifying what you're seeing. Sometimes when you're looking at these forms, the way they curve and turn under, um, it can almost be bewildering when you're trying to recreate that. And so sometimes putting a label on the different parts can simplify things. You still have to draw what you see, but knowing the basic structure and theory behind what you're seeing can help you sort of translate what you're seeing. One important thing for the nose that I learned was that drawing the nostril can be tricky to not make it look like a cartoon or make it look kind of piggish. And the key to that is not really drawing the border of the nostril as a single continuous curve, but rather to piece it together by thinking of it as the edges of the structures around the nostril. And if you're focusing on drawing the edges of those structures, the shape of the nostril will come together automatically. And then the next part was to focus on getting shadow edges and the edges of the form, but not drawing a hard outline around every border that you might conceive of, because sometimes that can make it look cartoonish as well. Maybe you don't draw all the way around the nostril. And maybe you don't draw all the way around the edge of the nose. You let that be implied by the future shading that you do. So for me, the eyes were by far the most difficult because it seemed obvious when they were wrong and even small errors in the eyes could make things look off. The nose was relatively simple, not that it came easy to me, but it came easier than the eyes. And then Naturally, you move from the nose down to the mouth, and the mouth was a little trickier than the nose, not quite as tricky as the eyes. And one of the key tips there that the instructor has for us is to maintain that center line uh, uh, going down from the nose to the lips to the chin, because that'll help us maintain the sense that the mouth is protruding from the face and that it's not just a flat plane. And so working off of that center line, you have three basic shapes on the upper lip and two basic shapes on the lower lip. And one of the deceptive things about the upper lip is how it starts off sort of facing outward and then it curls underneath to where the upper lip is almost facing downward. 
And so to try and establish that requires a lot of careful observa observation and uh, gradual moving across from the center line towards the outside of the mouth. And another important thing that I learned while working on this is that the corners of the mouth don't just come to a point on the drawing, but that they're sort of overlapped by a bit of muscle at each corner of the mouth. And that detail there is what will help the lips look less like a set of artificial lips slapped on the front, but rather that they're integrated into the face. Now with the lower lip, another important tip was that the, you, on your lip, when you look at it, you can see the transition from one shade of skin to another. And you don't have to, and probably should not, draw that border all the way across. Because that, again, makes it look almost like a clown painting lips on, you know? So you have to suggest that border. You, you start it at the center, but you don't carry it all the way across. The other thing that was uh, a revelation to me was just that the, the lip structure continues down to the chin and that you're trying to establish in this stage of the drawing the whole mass of that shape. I'm going to keep this section on the ear pretty short because the lighting got messed up for this portion of the video, but the basic principle is the same. A knowledge of anatomy will help you know what you're looking for as you try to establish these forms. Anyway, um, now that we've got these four key features of the portrait set up, it's time to move on to the next phase.